today I wanted to explain to you the ball bearing turbos are not rebuildable myth. Uh, basically online, I get this question a lot because online people see that other people claim that ball bearing turbos, when they go bad, they're not rebuildable. So you have to buy a new one or something like that. So the reason why people say that is because probably 10 years ago, it was really hard to get parts to replace them, to fix them and stuff. And uh, the issue is that, so when you have the bearing cage come apart inside the bearing housing, so this is the internal cage for the ball bearing turbos. When this comes apart, then usually the wheels and everything gets destroyed. So the bearing, house, bearing housing also has to be replaced as well as the wheels. So the whole center cartridge has to be replaced. But back then, you know, parts weren't as easily to get, easy to get 10 years ago as it is today. So the difference is that you can get all the individual pieces to build these turbos. But the difference is that, you know, back then they, it was a lot harder to get that stuff. So sometimes it's not rebuildable, but it is replaceable. Now, in some cases, you can actually rebuild one of these if it's blowing oil and the cage hasn't been destroyed. In some cases, the cage can actually be partially destroyed where the balls or this cage or this uh, retainer piece can deteriorate and this will still be good but it's not always like that so you know sometimes it's like a 50 50 chance if you know that your ball bearing turbo is blowing oil and you know that you should rebuild it or uh, let's say if you know it's blowing oil but you don't rebuild it in time and you just keep driving it then you're going to have to replace it and that can be really expensive the main reason why i made this video is because people keep asking me this same question are ball bearing turbos rebuildable and usually when i tell them yeah haven't you watched my video on rebuilding the gt 3071r or the 42r and then they usually tell me yeah i watched that video and then i'm like well you saw me do it and then they're just like, well, everybody online says they're not rebuildable. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, well, they are rebuildable. And in some cases, they do have to be replaced. Now, one thing to keep in mind is some of them are really hard to get parts for. And in some cases, like, I'm willing to, you know, make them or have that stuff made. But it can be very expensive. So here's another good example. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these bearing housings, but this is the GT37R series. This is very commonly used on some precision turbos. Uh, if you've ever seen the PT51, uh, no, 5031E, the ball bearing version, this is the same thing. So this is interchangeable with a 30R or a 37R. Now this this is actually a more special housing as in it wasn't really that common but it was also used in the force performance uh, to4z88 i actually have one of those this is the reason why i ended up having to buy these is because uh, on the T to488z somebody told me that the bearing housing you know the bearing, they told me the bearing housing was still good well, anyway, they took a grinder and ground all this down because it wouldn't go back in the turbine housing. Well, the reason why it wouldn't go back in the turbine housing is they never wire brushed the rust off of it. Well, after they ground it down, you couldn't get the bearing housing to sit in the right position. So I had to buy, buy these. So I had to buy new ones. But anyway, for the PTE turbos, the thing that you need to know about that is that there's three different cages for these and they all go with different shafts so here's the turbine for the gt37r if you'll notice it has a stagger here that stagger is for the specific cage that it goes with the cage that this that works with this is the same for the 37r the gt40r 4088 and probably the 49.4 and also the 4202R. 
Now, as far as the 45 are, I, I'm not really sure. I've never worked on one of those yet. So, some of them don't have the stagger from PTE, meaning that the cage was designed to slide over both sides, and the shaft was exactly like a journal bearing shaft. So, some of the 6262 ball bearings, ball bearing turbos, actually had the same turbine shaft as the journal bearing. As for the third ball bearing cage, I'm not really sure which one that was. I'll have to ask Ian because he's the one who told me that there's three different ones. The two that I mentioned are the two that I know of. Now, like if you ever had an issue where, um, where you had to replace the shaft anyway, you could just use a genuine cage and be able to fix it because, and you know, this, this style shaft that mimics the genuine one because it has that stagger on it. That's just designed to be a good press fit into the cage. If you don't have a good press fit into the cage, then the turbine shaft can actually be spinning inside the inner race of the cage rather than spinning the inner race to spin the balls in the cage. So here's the GT4088 style bearing housing. You'll notice that this is different because the bolts actually go through the bearing housing and connect to the turbine housing. This takes the same cage as that GT37R that I just mentioned before, which also takes the same cage as the 40, yeah, 4202R. Here's the turbine wheel for the 4088. This goes with that bearing housing. I think this, yeah, this turbine is like 68 millimeter on, on the small side. I can't remember offhand on the large side. Now here's a GT4202R turbine. You notice it still has a stagger just like the last one and the 37R. I can't remember the measurements offhand on this one. I will uh, look that up and put it in the description box. And I'll also put some links to these so you can check these these out just for fun. So uh, yeah, that's that's all, the main ball bearing turbos that I work on is a lot of those Garrett ones. And uh, currently, as this video is filming, I don't have a replacement bearing housing for this. If I ever needed one, or if you ever needed one, I could definitely get it get it made. But as for now. I have no need to provide that. And a tip for you to remove this pin, you're best off using a slide hammer because I've tried so many ways to make a tool that would fit and punch that out and sometimes it would work, but I've ran into so many times where the tool broke so I just had to get rid of the tool and then we did the slide hammer trick and that works perfect. Another way that people use uh, to remove this pin is that they'll put a flat washer right on here and then they'll put a bolt into the pin and they'll tighten that bolt and it will pull the pin out as you're tightening it but if you're not careful it will actually break the bolt off so there is a disadvantage to that so the reason why these turbos fail in the first place is usually if sometimes the seals can just kind of naturally wear out and just from so much use or a lack of oil or maybe too thin of oil or something and uh, the other reason why which is more common is if the if you have like an oil contamination issue like if you just had a blown engine or say that you had a blown head gasket and you had coolant go through the turbo which promoted wearing the seals out because you didn't have good enough lubrication sometimes you actually have uh, bearings come apart or dirt grime sludge or something get inside the turbo and block off the pinhole oil feed that's really common too so just keep those things in mind uh, this 4088 right here that I'm doing a rebuild on I actually rebuilt this about two years ago the guy just now put it on the car and the reason why it failed is because he didn't have an ounce of oil going through this 
all that I saw when I took this apart was just metal shavings because the bearing uh, just it, the ca inner cage came apart. He was extremely lucky because he didn't have to replace the shaft or the compressor wheel. Neither of them touched. He was running this turbo at like four pounds of boost just trying to get the car up and going but like i said he had no oil pressure at all going to this i don't know if his engine didn't have any oil pressure uh pushing oil into the feed line or if the feed line was kinked which it was but it just makes it hard to believe that a kinked feed line wouldn't be opened up by oil pressure so for the GT42 OTR bearing housing, that one is also different. It looks very similar to the general bearing version, except it's just designed for a ball bearing sleeve. So if you like this video, you can comment and give it a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't like it.